Yeah, I see the bars. On us, the holiday season, I don't know about you, but I got an email come on from Amazon about early Black Friday deals the day after Halloween. Talk about scary. So, if you're an entrepreneur, how do you break through the noise this holiday season? And if you're a shopper, how will you get the best deals? Well, this is Fort Knox, Rich Ideas and Powerful People. Joining me to untangle this retail riddle, I've got a great panel of experts. Adam Glassman is creative director at O, the Oprah magazine, and has been preparing for this season for more than six months. Uh, Steve Sadov is former chairman and CEO of Saks and an advisor to MasterCard. And Lauren Hirsch is a retail reporter with us at CNBC. Dot com. Welcome to all you guys. Also, uh, coming up later on the podcast, Daniel Lubetsky is the founder and CEO of Kind Snacks. You've probably seen the bars and the clean wrappers, but uh, you haven't heard the story. It is something else. But to dive in to retail now, it's a unique season. And so I want, I want to get some insight into how the retailers are thinking about it and thus how the consumers should be thinking about it. There's an extra day between Black Friday and Christmas this year, which means a whole lot of money. Steve, I'll start with you. What's gonna be different about this holiday season, especially when you think about online shopping, the move to more mobile shopping? Uh, what should consumers and retailers be thinking about and how they can come together? Well, I think the starting point is that we've got a lot of momentum coming into the holiday season. The consumer's healthy, unemployment's low, consumer confidence is high. The numbers coming through, let's say, October are very good. Month of October was up 6% in terms of MasterCard spending pulse uh, trend numbers. And the forecasts for the season are for a plus 5% consumer. That's versus a 4% last year holiday season and a 3% the previous holiday season. So you've got probably the best holiday season, I'm guessing, since 2012. So I mean, good, this is good for retailers might mean something different than good for consumers, though, right? Because not necessarily. Like maybe we don't have to discount as much. Or not enough. necessarily. No? I think that uh, inventories are in line. The margins are probably going to be pretty good. But having said that, the, the retailers know the consumers have perfect information on their phone. They can do the app, the, the bot that looks at the pricing. They know they have a lot of alternatives. The mobile not so much because the mobiles affect uh, is they're actually shopping all, doing all their shopping online it's affecting all of their purchase decisions so mm. probably 80% of purchase decisions are affected by mobile so the retailers are smart enough to know they better have a sharp price they're going to have to do the discounting so the consumer's going to get a deal however i think the retailers are in an environment where they're going to be it's going to be a little bit of a win win mm. consumer's going to get a good deal and i think the retailer's going to do okay adam uh you're at O, yeah. the Oprah magazine. Oprah, among the many other things that she is, is a master curator for our time. Whether it is books, whether it is her favorite things, you know, she, she's telling people this, not that. How big an operation is it? How many favorite things does she have? This is our largest ever. We have 107 this year. It's a lot of and favorite things. Honestly, we go into it, literally, Oprah's like, do we need that many? Maybe we should just do about 10 or 15. Because back on the show, when the show, the Oprah show, it was like 25 items. Mm -hmm. For some reason, you know, we would spend six months on it, and I have a team really of myself and two other people. We show her thousands of things. We ended up with 107 this year. Literally thousands yeah. of things. Thousands of things we call through. Because Oprah has to like everything herself. She has to have tried it, tasted it, smelled it be able to give it to someone else. Do you have an Oprah taste double? Like somebody who <laughs> likes the kinds of things that Oprah likes, who like does a first pass? Or, I mean, well, really... her name would be Gail King. Okay. Yes, <laughs> and she's in our office. Between Gail, myself, and I have two co-workers, Lisa and Mindy, we try it all. Yeah. Well, yeah. Lauren, how important is curation in this environment now? Because we, we've been talking about Omnichannel, which is mm -hmm. both in-store and online purchasing and, and how big a deal that is with technology moving in. Curation becomes an important part of that, mm -hmm. whether it's the site, Amazon doing it for you, people who like this might like, or it's Oprah doing it yeah. for you. How big a deal is that in a, in a season like this where people are buying a lot of stuff in a compressed amount of time? It's a very big deal. Uh, the interesting thing about Oprah's greatest uh, 
favorite things is a, we're, what we're seeing this season is you have Amazon with a toy catalog. You're seeing a lot of e-commerce players go and move into paper. And the interesting about the Amazon catalog is you can actually kind of use your cell phone to swipe it and buy it immediately online. So curation and kind of the combination of exploring on print and buying online or vice versa, exploring online and buying print is, is very important. And people like the idea of discovery. It's very right. important. Steve, so you're an advisor to MasterCard and the calendar and the holiday season is really important. Okay, so you got Thanksgiving Day, which is now a big shopping day, even if you're on your phone right. in your in your post turkey coma. Uh, and, and you've got Black Friday, you've got Cyber Monday, which is the biggest day. But I noticed on the calendar, Christmas is on a Tuesday. So that Friday, Saturday, Sunday are likely to be really big days as well. Do you have a sense, both from MasterCard now, who you advise, and also your days running Saks, how is this likely to shake out? When are, the, when are the best days for consumers to really focus on getting deals? Well, this is almost a best of all worlds calendar. I mean, this is a great calendar with the, the extra day, Tuesday, uh, Christmas. And you'd be surprised that forecast for the biggest single day of shopping is not Black Friday. It's the Sunday before Christmas yeah. as the biggest day, about the same as Black Friday. But, you know, it used to be that Black Friday was you got up early. I used to get up with the kids at 3 a.m. and we'd go and hit the deals and you'd be done by 7 a.m. and gotten all the best deals. And now with Thanksgiving Day, you know, Internet has become an enormous. It's growing at, let's call it 20 percent. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's not brick and mortar in debt. Uh, it's you've got it's like 80 percent. Right? Yeah, no, it, but it's now it's probably close to 10 percent of all shopping is Internet. But you right. still got 80, 90 percent that's in the store. Mm -hmm. But the it, the importance of Black Friday and Thanksgiving Day is it's a kickoff of a mindset. All of a sudden, the consumer switches on. They're excited. They're saying, hey, I got to start thinking about that list. I'm going to see here are the deals. And that's where the importance of it is. And so it's not tracking the sales of Black Friday were X versus our expectation was Y. It's the mindset. The season actually goes all the way through the first of the year because the week after Christmas for a retailer is very important in terms of translating those returns into more sales. Sure. And then it's the Saturdays. Every Saturday during the month of December is a huge day. So I think if I were a retailer, I'd be looking at staffing on that those weekends and on that Sunday before Christmas, I'd be making sure that I've got those associates there to be able to treat the customers well. The deals for the consumer are going to spread throughout the season. You're going to have ups and downs, but you're going to see deals all the time. Adam, give us a peek behind the curtain on this curation bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, every, especially smaller uh, uh, retailer or probably product developer's dream is to become one of Oprah's favorite things. Yes. You said there are literally thousands of products that actually even make it to you that you look at before picking the 150 some odd that, that actually become part of the list. How do you even get considered to be part of that? Because I'm sure there's, there's a, a world right. full of people who would like to be. There are. I mean, this is a fact. Myself and my team, we are at every trade show. We are at every store. We are checking out every showroom. We're always looking. People Instagram me. You would not believe it. I have found people that they have DM me hmm. on Instagram. And I'm like, well, this looks like an interesting idea. Does that work? Did you? Did Sometimes, you absolutely. So there are it people who DM you yes. on Instagram who got. And I'm like, oh, this the... is interesting. Let me look at it. People send us stuff. I mean, daily we huh. get cookies and cupcakes and pictures. You name it. So we find people always. Truly. Wow, um, Lauren, how how much of a chance? Do the small retailers and the offbeats products really have during the season? It's actually a great time to be a small retailer. Uh, the funny thing is, is yes, we all talk about Amazon, and Amazon is a beast. I wouldn't recommend anyone kind of go up head up against them. But today's consumers, the millennial generation, they like things. Look, I'm sure your list will kind of indicate that, right? Yeah. They like things local. They like things personalized. They like things unique. And you actually see big box department store. You see retailers like Macy's trying to make themselves more local, smaller, more personalized. So actually, it's, it's a great chance to attract the consumer. I agree with Lauren. I, th 
I, if you look at the growth rates in the last several years, the small local have been growing at twice the growth rate of the uh, big guys. Really? Oh, absolutely. So it's like an and opposite so to it, the it, Walmart. What the consumer Amazon wants is effect. exactly. Now, huh. Walmart's are doing well too, but right. it's the consumer wants something that's different. Mm -hmm. What Adam is off doing is finding that different, the unique, the personal, the words that Lauren's using. That's what the consumer's asking for. They don't want to. If it's a Me Too item, they want the lowest price. If it's going to be something that everybody else doesn't have, and it has to have a story to it. I think the that's story, important. That, the story that's is key. so the important. The storytelling behind that's, it. That's what you Who need. Who are these people and the mom and pop? And, yep. you know, for us, the story continues beyond, like, the item. The story is during the selling season, we have people that now have to staff up. They maybe were a mom and pop with three people, and they've now hired 18 people. They've had to build a new warehouse or create new shipping ways and methods to get it out to people. For us, it's all about the small business owner. And where are they? Oh, they are all over. We have, we have someone on the list this year in Michigan. We have people down in Florida. We have people down in Knoxville, Tennessee, all over. Logistically, how does that work? When do they find out that they're one of the favorite things? And then how long do they have to get ready? Because okay. it's like... They find out, usually we let people know right after Labor Day. It all depends on when I can see Oprah and when we can pick the final list. Do you tell them definitively or you're like, Oprah kind of likes? No, no, no. We oh. do it definitively <laughs> okay, because right. we have a partnership with Amazon. Okay. So for one-stop shopping, you go to Amazon for everything. So a lot of these mom and pop people have never dealt mm. with Amazon before. So there oh. is a whole onboarding process for them to get comfortable with it and get inventory to Amazon and all of that. So are they afraid of Amazon a little bit? Some people are. Absolutely. A lot of people are. Big people are afraid <laughs> of Amazon. I used to be afraid of Amazon until I really was entrenched in it. And I have to say they've been brilliant, especially for small businesses. Which How is why people are afraid of them. Yeah. How much of an impact? So you take a small business and you put them on the list, how much of an impact does that last throughout the year? Is it just a one-day bump, or is it such wonderful publicity that it just sticks? Or It's a combination. Yeah. It's never a one-day bump. Yeah. It's certainly their best quarter of the year. Mm -hmm. And for many of these small businesses, they decide to stick with Amazon throughout the entire year. I mean, we have this one gal, Gloria Williams, who has a company called The Foot Nanny, which is foot cream. And we launched her on Favorite Things. She's been with Amazon throughout the entire year hmm. and is growing her business really on Amazon. Hmm. So what's the difference between the, the product, the company that takes best advantage of this kind of exposure and the company that maybe gets copied and you know falls off? Have you been able to isolate what it is about either telling the story or the uniqueness of the product that, that makes it more than just a one quarter pop for them? Well, it is about the story, quite frankly. We also do a lot of videos. Mm -hmm. We have Oprah testing and trying that. We really encourage our people on Favorite Things to sort of make the most of this moment. Market it. Go out there socially. Do some email blasts. Do Facebook. All this. I mean, we stick with them throughout the entire sell season. We don't just release it out there and say bye-bye. Mm. I mean, I'm always working with them. I mean, we have a people, they're called Pop Insanity, artisanal popcorn here in Suffern, New York. They did not know really about Oprah's favorite things. I said to these gentlemen, do you have a wife, a mother, and aunts? <laughs> Go ask them who Oprah is and what favorite things is. They called me back the next day. They go, we're on board. <laughs> it is $170 of a giant tin of popcorn. So not cheap at all. Mm. And it is sold out already. So you called them and were like, yes. Would you? And, and they were like, who? Oprah? Yeah, well, they knew <laughs> Oprah, but they didn't fully understand the whole thing. But like when I really say, look into it, and then they're on board. I love that. Like yeah. you're, you're really finding these. It's not just all people who are knocking on your door. That's cool. Uh, we got a question from a viewer. Uh, and Steve, I think th you would have insight into this. How does Small Business Day, November 24th, uh, get more traction for Christmas sales, or, or does it? I mean, everybody's trying to invent holidays. Is that small business uh, holiday r really having an impact that you know of? Oh, I love it. It's Amex created it. it uh, I think Brand that X. It, <laughs> since yeah. you're advising MasterCard. Uh, I it, look, they right. did, but it's uh, <laughs> advising MasterCard. MasterCard does some wonderful things. Right, right. Uh, that, amazing. But it's, look, I think it's bringing attention to the, uh, to the small business community. Whether or not you're getting the sales being driven that day, I don't think that it's big number. I don't know the numbers, so it's, uh, I don't think it's an enormous uh, 
uh, impact in terms of the overall sales. I, I do think what it's saying is, it's, again, it's a kickoff that it's not just the big boxes, it's the small players are equally out there and uh, uh, creating offerings for the uh, consumer. I think that the small retailers, it goes back to Lauren's point, that where they are going to win is through the, they have a better, they can do a better job if they're good at it, at the storytelling, at the unique product, at differentiation. Mm. That's, it, it's not about whether it's a uh, small business Saturday, it's about do they use the tools that are to their advantage. Mm -hmm. The Amazons are there, they're enormously important, but there are so many, so much white space and niches that people can play. Retail is enormous, yeah. and there's opportunity for all of these uh, players to win. One of the phenomena that I've seen is a convergence in retail, actually. Look at Amazon opening up stores, mm -hmm. then well, everybody who has brick and mortar is going omnichannel, digital right. and they're all finding because uh, it's reacting to the consumer the consumer wants product anywhere anytime they want to be able to get it driven by the mobile driven by the web driven to uh, buy online pick up in store you name it and this it, so this convergence so everyone when Amazon does a toy catalog in print or they <laughs> open up a store yep. and then you look at Walmart and all the creative things they've been doing digitally and they're both winners this isn't about a, a winner and a loser in the sense, it, but it's bringing the capabilities so that the consumer wins. Lauren, give me your take on this holiday creation thing, because we, we've had Black Friday for a while. Now we've got Cyber Monday. Amazon invented Prime Day. Alibaba invented Singles Day. Um, there's a there's MasterCard a national... created Priceless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. The most important of all of the holidays. There's Pickle Day this week, which I hear is big in New York. We got a lot of good pickles here. I don't know, but but are these marketing efforts to just drive sales in a noisy era? Do you have a sense of what makes a difference between how one works and one doesn't? I think, you know, we in the press help with those efforts to publicize them, so there you go. I mean, certainly I, try, yeah. I, you know, I can't you really answer as to whether or not Joe on the street, he's motivated to buy because of it's Black Friday. What I can tell you is, and I'm sure you've seen this, you know, sales are starting earlier and earlier and earlier. And people talk about it as a season. So Black Friday, Cyber Monday, those are great marketing events. It certainly gives us an exciting opportunity right. to talk and share ideas. But it's really about, I think, as you earlier mentioned, the broader season of steep discounts, and not only discounts, you have retailers trying out to te new technology. We're seeing a lot of people explore with uh, delivery. Target is um, trying out new things, Walmart, obviously. So it's more just about the season of retailers showcasing what they can offer in terms of a price and mm -hmm. what they can offer in terms See, the of the The difference experience. between, let's use your example of Singles Day. Right. Singles Day is different because everything is focused on the one day. So you have $30 billion of sales in the 31 billion in the one day, but everyone is combining all the sales, they're pre-selling and it all hits one day. In the US, the way that we're doing it is we're spreading it out over the entire season so that it's not just about Hey, if you miss Black Friday, every dollar sale was on Black Friday. That's a little different than how it's operating in China with the uh, Singles Day, because mm -hmm. we're extending it over the t time frame. Uh, Adam, maybe you can give me some insight into Oprah and her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try. Yeah, I, know, I know you can. Yeah. Her, her consumer um, connection, because mm -hmm. here, here's somebody who first became a star in the TV era. We had no World Wide Web. Mm. Um, yeah. Created a magazine empire that she's on the cover of every time, mm -hmm. breaking rules, and has still managed without the show, and in a time when print is supposed to be declining, to to be Our this- Our biggest issue of the year, biggest, up in advertising and newsstand. Mm. So print is far from dead. So how does she and the brand stay relevant? What's the digital connection? Because we don't get to see that as clearly or as often. Are you, do you understand the, the age and demographics and location of where people are? Does that and that feedback inform what kinds of favorite things you're looking at, whether it's more right. foods or, you know, more pillows or I, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's a very good question. The truth is we go by uh, Oprah and her gut and her feeling for what the American public is about to crave right before they even know it. Really? She had a wonderful feeling because she, during the Oprah show, she met 
hundreds of women weekly, so she sort of knew that. Mm -hmm. Now she doesn't have that daily show, but she is out there between the network, the magazine, uh, and all her other things. She has a really good feeling. Now, we have a new website that we just launched with Hearst, which is amazing, and it has a younger audience. We have Oprah's network, which reaches millions of people. So we really are more about a psychographic than a demographic, truly. It's really about like, the feeling that Oprah puts out there more than anything. So I mean, th this room, I covered Apple for a long time, have covered yeah. Apple for a long time, and Steve Jobs' thing was always, y you can't focus group really creative new products because people only know they want what they've seen before. Mm. Hmm. Is, is this a similar concept where Oprah, in, in effect, is saying, hey, I'm out there, I'm talking to people, I have my own curation sense. I don't have to rely on simply data, not that it's not valuable, right, right, to right. inform what people are going to want. We're going we're gonna to use some, intu some informed intuition here. That's pretty much how she's always rolled. I mean, even with the television show, ratings were fabulous, but there was a time when she decided she was going to go in a different direction than the sort of Jerry Springfield, Springer direction that everyone went. And she took a hit, but she stuck with it because she had a feeling that the public wanted more than people throwing chairs at, e at each other. You know, if, you broaden it, right. if you broaden, Adam, to what you're saying, and I, I think uh, that uh, Oprah's sort of the master and the best at it. I mean, she really is. But if I look at where retail really is and has gone and is going, it's this blending of art and science. Mm -hmm. And that it's, people always used to ask me, is retail art or is it science? And the true merchant, it's their instinct and gut, but it's informed. That, go back to that informed. The data matters. And it's more, mattering more as you try to move in this world of analytics to understanding the customer at a level of one or small segments of uh, right. customers. But the instinct, being able to instinctually know where's the consumer go going, the, the role of the fashion office is still there because it's not, you can't use the numbers to always tell what the consumer's going to do. And Oprah was, is, is, is uh, terrific at, uh, at that. But good retailers or good merchants are able to do that uh, within companies. Now, the, that small, back to that small retailer, the great small retailer has really good insight in terms of their own customer because they don't appeal to everyone. They appeal right. to a very they narrow the target. Names. They know, yeah, exactly. you know, my grandfather, I always used to, had a small clothing store in upstate New York and he knew every one of his customers and he'd buy for that customer and that was how they lived was understanding the well technology allows you to start doing some of that on a mass scale now but it still was that instinct of who the uh, customer really is I feel like a great example of that is um, Amazon uh, they've as we all know have done a really big private label push in one area that it's very much TBD as to whether or not they will be successful is female young female apparel that is very hard to I'm sure right. you know from Zach right that's yep. very yeah. hard to predict with the data and from what I've heard from people, from people that I talk to, it's been a challenge for Amazon as well. Yeah, I, I imagine it has. Once again, this is Fort Knox. We are talking about the holiday season. It's upon us, like it or not. If you want to get out there early, I guess you could check out Oprah's favorite things or, or start shopping online um, a, as well. Um, Lauren, when you look at the way different types of stores prepare for a season like this mm -hmm. and the types of products maybe that you're hearing more about, I mean, I'm starting to get a sense that 4K TVs, steep mm -hmm. discounts on those is what we should expect to see. One of the main things uh, out of the gate, Black Friday. Are there other trends, other things that you're seeing or hearing about that consumers should maybe have on their radar either for big discounts or... Yeah. So I would say it's twofold. We can't ignore Amazon. Amazon loves to promote their, their own brands, their private brands. Last year we saw them promote their audio products mm. a lot, and I expect that's going to happen again this year because the Echo exactly because it's not only really a spot is Echo. fantastic. It's the not new Amazon only, spot is great. I don't have one, but I've heard wonderful things. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, for them, right, it's not only a one day sale. You you get that sale, and you you get them in your full ecosystem. So that'll be big on Amazon, I suspect. But one interesting thing that I'm paying attention to is. Sears filed for bankruptcy in October, right. uh, and last year we were in a similar situation with Toys R Us, yeah. right? So Toys R Us filed for bankruptcy right before the holidays, and then what happened? They needed a great holiday season. Walmart 
Amazon, Target, just slash Here's prices. Here's what I want to know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, people coming in trying to grab share that's the, because there's a, there's a gap in the market. So that's the thing, right? I mean, it's a little bit different. I would say there were more, I don't have numbers in front of me. I would expect there were more current Toys R Us shoppers than there are current Sears shoppers. That's been in slow decline for a while. Uh, that being said, they're still known for their appliances and Kenmore is now sold on Amazon. So it'll be very interesting to see if they make a play for that appliance market. Steve, you have any expectations about specific products or product categories where consumers can have particular success hunting for deals this season? Oh, I think the consumer is going to find deals across all categories. I mean, besides cashmere sweaters, we know that those are always well. It, cashmere sweaters, <laughs> but uh, you know, look, the hottest trend in uh, apparel right now is athleisure. Still, so oh, absolutely, uh, and it's at the high, medium, low, meaning lux luxury brands are uh, building it into their mix as well as the entry level. So, uh, you know, so I think you're going to see the consumer clamoring for. Uh, products like that and you know the deals will be there to be had uh, across every category you know if I look at the trends electronics uh, Lawrence talking about I, I think you're gonna see some great deals on uh, electronics but you're coming into a holiday season where the electronic category couldn't be better yeah. I mean they're seeing six seven percent growth the uh, you're gonna you know you have hardware I and mean, the home improvement home furnishings is a uh, is a category that's doing exceptionally well right now whether people are buying less new homes but they're remodeling and they're uh, making sure that their current home is uh, well well stuffed and has all the things that they want to have that those are the kinds of things people are going to be buying uh, so I wouldn't say it's the single item I'm looking across all the categories any uh, maybe I'm putting you on the spot any smart home type stuff among Oprah's favorite well, things. We have she... the spots, which is great, and it does a well, lot yeah, of stuff. Okay, you're on Amazon, yeah, of course. But, 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 but she picked that. Okay. The new Apple Watch, I will <laughs> say, is fantastic because of all these new um, capabilities that it does and the health app. That is fantastic, and I suspect that will do very well. Have you seen any standouts just in these first few days of queries about traffic to certain favorite things? Are you, are you able yes, to? Yes, we have some things that are ready. The vendors tell me, because Amazon, of course, we're not really privy to their numbers, mm -hmm. but the vendors tell me. So we have a lasagna pan that I you can make that. three different kinds of lasagnas, sold out. We have these beautiful glasses. No, wait, from, yeah. I, let, me, let me go back to lasagna, because yeah. I live in New Jersey, <laughs> okay. and I was, a, I was a lasagna fan before I lived in New Jersey, but three different lasagnas like at once? What, what's the, at what's once. The... You got a vegan at your house, you got a vegetarian, you have a meat lover. You mm. can make all three in that pan because it's divided. So you don't have to go out there and make different stuff for different people. A pan divided. A so pan you don't is have divided. To have a house divided. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So your house doesn't have to be divided. That's beautiful. Your pan is. Okay, go on. So I that has been great. We have a company called Glitterville down in Tennessee. They make beautiful glasses. They are sold out. I mean, in fact, they tell me they've been in every magazine. We are the only magazine that actually moves merchandise to their wow. experience. So it's really home stuff does very well for us, too. Anything that's wellness oriented. I mean, I have to say we have a jumpsuit that Oprah helped design with a group of uh, women out in L.A. called L.A. Relax. Made in the USA. Oprah loves a jumpsuit. So mm -hmm. she said, find me one that everyone can do. If she you helped too work much on it. You can exactly, you can wear this jumpsuit before and you get on your Weight Watchers. Exactly, plan. but it's a jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> it Oprah, is a Weight jumpsuit Watchers, that yeah, you yeah, go yeah, from yeah, the yeah, office yeah. to dinner on a plane to bed in, and that's what she likes. All right. Yeah. Final thoughts, Thank you, everybody. Yes. Um, <laughs> final thoughts. Maybe a piece of advice for consumers: the best thing they can do to get the maximum value this holiday season. I know you're thinking about this all the time, Steve, so I'll go to you first. Well, I think it's going to be early and late. Yeah. I think that the consumer getting out there early, uh, take Adams that they run out of stock on some of the hot items, yeah. and some things can be replenished and others can't. Yeah. So if I'm a consumer and I have a category or an item that I really want to uh, go after, I'd get that early. If it's going to be some more commodity types of items that uh, uh, everybody has, a cashmere sweater, then, hey, you're going to find deals all throughout the season. I don't think you have to rush to get it. But overall, the consumer is going to be healthy. It's going to be a good season. So recognizing that, the, I think the retailers will run out of uh, inventories on good stuff. 
and you ought to be out there, and you're, there's going to be deals to be had. Great. Early and late, Lauren. Well, building on that, one of the interesting things about this year that we saw a little bit last year, but we'll see more this year, is the trucking shortage. So from what I'm hearing from my sources, there's a lot of concern among retailers as to whether or not they'll have enough people to get you get you your hot item. Right. So you want to order those hot items first to make sure you can get them, because what retailers may start doing is limiting demand so they don't end up having disappointed customers. So early if you're choosy and... I, I say early. I mean, we released the list last Tuesday and people are shopping already. Right. So I say early for sure. Adam, Lauren, Steve, yeah. thanks. Up next, Daniel Lubetsky from <laughs> Kind Snacks. And this has been Fort Knox. Rich ideas and powerful people. Thanks for being with us. I'll see you next time.